Hello friends, we come to the last lecture of this week. The topic for our presentation is Joa Gumare Rosa. He is a Brazilian writer and the short story that we have is The Third Bank of the River. We will see the objectives, Rosa's life and writings, read some passages from story The Third Bank of the River, describe the characters, look into the theme, form, language and literary devices. Then we will consider human relationships and reflections on life. We will see certain views of Gimare Rosa on crocodile and the river. We will compare Herman Hesse's novel Siddhartha with the third bank of the river to understand what the river means for us. We will consider some takeaways and then finally summarize our presentation. What are the objectives that we have for Rosa's story, The Third Bank of the River? The first is to learn about the life and writings of the Brazilian author Joa Gumare Rosa. The second objective is to discuss and analyze The Third Bank of the River, one of the most famous short stories from the Brazilian literature. The third objective is to appreciate the value of the relationship between a father and a son. The fourth objective is to understand the circumstances of a father leaving home and yet staying near and far simultaneously. The father is far away and yet so close by. The next objective is to reflect on the essential loneliness of human beings. The last objective is to compare the third bank of the river with Hermann Hesse's German novel Siddhartha for understanding the significance of the river of life. We will learn a lot about the river of life. Gumare Rosa's life is a checkered life, a very interesting life. Joe Gumara Rosa was born in 1908 and he died in 1967. He also lived a brief life rather comparatively. He is a Brazilian Portuguese author. He wrote in Portuguese language. He was a poet, novelist, short story writer and a diplomat as well. Initially, he was trained as a doctor, just like our Anton Chekhov from Russian literature, but he chose to become a civil servant. He supported the Holocaust survivors. He had an intimate experience of the backland of Brazil, that is Satao. He is considered to be comparable to the Russian writer Leo Tolstoy and the French writer Marcel Proust. That means more of serious thinking about life, the meaning of life, the purpose of life. We have a very interesting quotation which I am sure all of you like. Who is the master? If you ask a question like that, then you can find the answer here. According to Gumare Rosa, the master is not the one who teaches. Then who is he? It is the one who suddenly learns. I think by teaching this course, I have learned certain things suddenly. I am happy with that. I am sure you will also learn a few things from this course. Let us repeat it. It is worth repeating. The mastery is not the one who teaches, it is the one who suddenly learns. Let us see the writings of Gumare Rosa. We have two categories here, one short story collections and another novels. The short story collections are Sagarana, Carpo de Belli, Primaras Historias, Tumea. Terceras Historias. We have a major novel that is called Grand Satao Varedas. This has been translated into English as The Devil to Pay in the Backlands. This is considered to be similar to James Joyce's novel Ulysses, a modernist novel. And this is again considered to be a significant contribution to Latin American literature. Let us come to the story The Third Bank of the River now. The original Portuguese title is uh, Terceira Margam do Rio. It was first published in Primeras Historias in 1962. The English version was published in The Third Bank of the River and other stories in 1968, which were translated by Barbara Shelby. The Third Bank of the River, as you can see, as you can see, is the title story of the collection. We have a different translation from Barbara Shelby's. The translation that we use is by William Grossman and included in modern Brazilian short stories. This story is available in many anthologies including Oxford Anthology of the Brazilian short story edited by K. David Jackson. 
who are the characters that we have in this story. We have the son, he is very affectionate to his father, the father is calm and withdrawn, but the mother is quarrelsome and dominating and as a result, this is one cause that is possible, the father leaves the family, but he is close by, he does not come back home. We have a brother for the narrator, we have a brother for the mother as well, we have a sister for the narrator, the sister's husband is also there after their marriage, they also have a child. We have a priest, two soldiers and newspaper men coming into the story. Many of these characters do not have any name, their age is also not known to us. That means, these are timeless characters and they have a fable like quality. And we have some very interesting observation about the river and the boat in the story. That is why we can say that the river and the boat are also something like characters which we can find in the story, the third bank of the river. The river is silent and also violent, silent during normal time, violent during rainy and uh, turbulent times. The boat is sturdy, but how long one can use the same boat? That is something very interesting question. The father makes a boat and he takes the boat into the water and stays in the boat for ever without returning. We also think about memory or time as a character referring to the river of life that all of us swim through. We will have some interesting observations at the end of the discussion. Now, let us read some passages from the story. Who is the father? We have a description here. This is the beginning of the story. My father was a dutiful, orderly, straightforward man and according to several reliable people of whom I inquired, he had had these qualities since adolescence or even childhood. By my own recollection, he was neither jollier nor more melancholy than the other men we knew, maybe a little quieter. It was mother, not father, who ruled the house. She scolded us daily, my sister, my brother and me. But it happened one day that father ordered a boat, that is where we have the complication of the story. It is a normal life, father, mother, children, they live together. One problem, little problem that we have is the mother is quarrelsome, but suddenly one day the father decides to build a boat and move into the river. He was very serious, that is the father. He was very serious about it. It was to be made specially for him of mimosa wood, a sturdy wood. It was to be sturdy enough to last to 20 or 30 years and just large enough for one person. Mother carried on plenty about it, about the way in which he made the boat. Now, let us see the topic, the father on the boat. He just looked at me, that is a narrator, gave me his blessing and by a gesture told me to go back. I made as if to do so, but when his back was turned, I ducked behind some bushes to watch him. Father got into the boat and rowed away, its shadow slid across the water like a crocodile, long and quiet. That is how the narrator describes how the father enters the water. Father did not come back, this is the crux of the story and what happens after this is all about the effect of father's absence. Father did not come back nor did he go anywhere, really, he just rowed and floated across and around out there in the river. Everyone was appalled, nobody was happy. What had never happened, what could not possibly happen was happening. How can you expect somebody to go to the water on a boat and never return, yet stay nearby? Our relatives, neighbors and friends came over to discuss the phenomenon, it became a phenomenon, something to talk about. Now, how does the family cope with the absence of the father? Mother sent for her brother to come and help on the farm and in business matters. She had the school teacher come and tutor us, the children at home because of the time we had lost. One day at her request, the priest put on his vestments, went down to the shore and tried to exorcise the devils that had got into my father. He shouted that father had a duty to seize his unholy obstinacy. Another day she arranged to have two soldiers come and try to frighten him, all to no avail. My father went by in the distance sometimes, so far away he could barely be seen. He never replied to anyone and no one ever got close to him. He remained alone, the father remained alone. However, 
the father living alone had to meet with lot of difficulties. The son feels for the father's sufferings. We had to get accustomed to the idea of the fathers being out on the river. We had to, but we could not. We never could. I think I was the only one who understood to some degree what our father wanted and what he did not want. This is where we see the close bond between the father and the son. The thing I could not understand at all was how he stood the hardship, day and night in sun and rain, in heat and in terrible mid-year, cold spells with his old hat on his head and very little other clothing, week after week, month after month, year after year, unheedful of the waste and emptiness in which his life was slipping by. He never set foot on earth or grass, on isle or mainland shore. No doubt, he sometimes tied up the boat at a secret place, perhaps at the tip of some island, to get a little sleep. He never lit a fire or even struck a match and he had no flashlight. He took only a small part of the food that I left in the hollow rock, not enough, it seemed to me, for survival. The father had left the house, but the son would steal some food from home and uh, keep it in a rock for the father. The mother also understood it later and so she would not notice that the son was taking it. She knew that the son was giving some food to the father. We can see that the son is very much devoted to the father, so we see some kind of affection. He did not seem to care about us at all, father did not seem to care for the children, but I, the narrator, felt affection and respect for him and whenever they praised me because I had done something good, I said, this is how he shows his affection for the father. My father taught me to act that way. It was not exactly accurate, but it was a truthful sort of lie. We have highlighted that expression, a truthful sort of lie to indicate that all of us indulge in such statements. As I said, father did not seem to care about us, but then why did he stay around there? That is a question, big question of the narrator. If the father did not care for the children, he could have gone away, far away, but he stayed close by. Why did he stay close by and yet did not return home? Why did not he go up the river or down the river beyond the possibility of seeing us or being seen by us? He alone knew the answer. This is something mysterious about the father leaving the house for some unknown reason, not telling anybody, not talking with anybody, but remaining nearby. That is a source of problem for the narrator. The son has the sense of guilt and pain, so he shares the pain with the readers. I have only sad things to say. What bad had I done? What was my great guilt? My father always away and his absence always with me. Look at this statement. My father always away and his absence always with me. And the river always a river perpetually renewing itself, the river always. I was beginning to suffer from old age, the sun also started growing, in which life is just a sort of lingering. I had attacks of illness and of anxiety. I had a nagging rheumatism and he, what was happening to the father? Why? Why was he doing it? He must have been suffering terribly. He was so old, the son was growing, the father also was growing older. One day in his failing strength, he might let the boat capsize. What will happen to him in his old age? Or he might let the current carry it downstream. How long can he manage the boat? On and on until it plunged over the waterfall to the boiling turmoil below. It pressed upon my heart. He felt the pain. He was out there and I was forever robbed of my peace. Look at the way in which the son describes how restless he is living. I am guilty of I know not what and my pain is an open wound inside me. Perhaps I would know. If things were different, I began to guess what was wrong. The son is unable to understand why such things are happening. Why is the father away? Why is he growing old? Why does he feel the pain of the father's absence? However. The son has a strange meeting with the father one day. Father, you have been out there long enough. You are old. Come back. The son tells the father, you do not have to do it anymore. Come back and I will go instead. Right now, if you want, any time I will get into the boat, I will take your place. The son wants the father to come back home and retire, take rest. But then something else happens. 
and when I had said this, my heart beat more firmly. He heard me when the son said this, the father heard it. He stood up from the boat. He maneuvered with his oars and headed the boat towards me to the son. He had accepted my offer. The son wanted to go to the river, take the boat and then wanted the father to come back to the shore. At that time, when the father had accepted the son's offer, we see the narrator saying, and suddenly I trembled down deep, for he had raised his arm and waved, raised his arm and waved the first time in so many, so many years and I couldn't. In terror, my hair on end, I ran, I fled madly, for he seemed to come from another world and I am begging forgiveness, begging, begging. So many years the son had not seen the father, one day when he heard the word of the son to take the place of the father, he emerges from his boat. When he appears in front of the son, he is unable to believe that that was the father. He was a strange human being and so he could not really accept the father and so he ran away from the place asking for forgiveness, begging for forgiveness. There is something mysterious about this story. There is something strange about this story. We can't really understand the incomprehensible life. Let's see the thematic contrast now. Of course, we have the father and the son, caring father and caring father, freedom and responsibility. When a person marries a woman, has a children, he has a responsibility to the children and the family. But in this case, we find that the father suddenly one day disappears. We have peace and restlessness, wellness and illness, fear and courage, failure and success, silence and speech, life and death river and land. This is a very interesting contrast. River on the one hand, the father chooses to live on the river, but the family is here on the land. Let us see the form of the story. The story is told by the narrator. So, we have first person narrative. The story is linear and mostly reflective. The son is the narrator. He has something like an oral monologue. The whole story is like a stream of consciousness that the narrator shares with the reader. The story is set in a village near a river bank and so we have the contrast between land and water always. We also have the contrast between solid, steady and safe life versus shaky, unsteady and unsafe life, unsafe life on water. What I found very interesting about this story is something to do with analogical thinking. If the father wants to live on the river, he makes a boat. What do we make to live in this life? So, there is a connection between river and life and there is a connection between boat and something else. What is that something else? Is that time? Is that memory? Do we live in our memory? That is a big question. Do we live in our feelings? Fear, courage, love, hatred, anger, everything. If we use a boat to live or cross over water, what do we need to live our life on land? Do we need a house or a coffin, a canoe or a boat? Is land also a kind of river? That is a metaphysical question that we ask at the end of the story. Let us see the language. Remember, it was originally written in Portuguese language. So, what we can understand is only the English translation. The translation that we have has all simple sentences in simple past tense form. Father said nothing. Father made no reply. Father did not come back, mother was ashamed, my sister got married, my sister had a baby boy, mother finally moved too, she left the village, only the son remains here, the river always, he heard me, he stood up, I fled madly, I am what must be silent. That is a quite a beautiful sentence at the end, he becomes silent. We have some questions as well. Was her husband going to become a fisherman all of a sudden or a hunter? The son thinks about the father as the husband of his mother. Had I gone crazy? The son, he asked himself, am I a man after such a failure? The failure to take the boat of the father and ask him to come back to the land? We also have some exclamations like how far from the truth they were. So, there is a kind of contrast between truth and falsehood or appearance and reality. Let us see some literary devices in this uh, story. Of course, we have the major metaphor of the river. The river is considered to be a metaphor of life. It is a symbol of life. It is a situational paradox. 
the paradox of the father always away and his absence always with me that is the son. We have the irony the son offers to take the place of the father, but he runs away from the father when the father approaches him. We also have a simile in some sentences here are some examples its shadow slid across the water like a crocodile long and quiet the shadow of the boat that is what is the reference here. He just moved about on the river solitary aimless like a derelict a person who does not care for anything one who does not have anything one who has been excommunicated he just moved away about on the river solitary aimless like a derelict. Then we have another sentence the marshes which he knew like the palm of his hand the marshland with water and all that the father knew everything. We also have some biblical reference my father was like Noah you can say this is an allusion to the Bible the character from the Bible who made the boat for all the creatures of the earth to save them when there was a great deluge. So, the father is like Noah. Let us see the human relationships in the story. The members of a family relate to each other especially the father, the mother and the son. We have a quarrelsome and dominant mother, but the father is silent and submissive. We also have the son being silent and affectionate. The son is the eldest son, there is another sister, there is another brother. His sister, brother and mother move away from the father and also from the village. They do not think about him too much, but it is the eldest son who always thinks about the father and stays back in the village. He too runs away the son who is affectionate also runs away at the end finally, what happens the father is alone or we are all alone one is alone loneliness is a theme that is very crucial for us in our life in literature as well. Let us see some questions for this topic reflections on life what is life is it a truthful sort of lie what is family. Why do we get married and then leave the family alone? Where do we live? Do we live on water or do we live on the land? Do we live in our memory? Do we live alone or in relationships with people? What do we do to each other? Do we cause pain or give pleasure to each other? Do we make a boat or box and live in silos of our own that is uh, living away from each other? Who can we understand? Who can understand us? Can understanding be really possible between human beings? Do we take responsibility for our words and actions? What are we? What are human beings? And we have a very troublesome question are we condemned to loneliness? The beautiful sentence that we have at the end of the story is I am what must be silent? I am silence. What must be? That also we do not know. I am silent. Do not speak, remain silent. Look into yourself understand the world as much as you can without words. Gumare Rosa has some interesting statement on crocodile and the river. He says I would like to be a crocodile. A writer like Rosa wants to be a crocodile living in the river and the name of the river is Sao Francisco. I would like to be a crocodile living in the river Sao Francisco. The crocodile comes to the world like a master in metaphysics because for it each river is an ocean a sea of wisdom even if it reaches a hundred the crocodile may live in the river for hundred years, but the river is like an ocean and ocean of wisdom. I would like to be a crocodile because I love the great rivers for they are deep as a human soul we can never understand the depth of the human soul. On the surface they are lively and clear, but in the depths they are tranquil and dark like humanity's sufferings. The sufferings that we have in the whole world are deep and dark and tranquil. I love another thing about our great rivers their eternity they are all eternal yes river is a magical word to conjugate eternity that is why we can say the river of life we live through this river of life. Let us see the comparison between Gumara Rosa and Herman Hess. Gumara Rosa remember he is a Brazilian writer writing in Portuguese language, Herman Hess a German writing in German language, but then we have the translation of both these writings. The third bank of the river is a Brazilian short story whereas Siddhartha is a German novel. 
We have a father in the third bank of the river who lives on the river in a boat away from his family. In Siddhartha, we have a character called Vasudeva. He is a boatman. He ferries people from one side of the river to the other side. The father in the third bank of the river does not interact with anyone including his own affectionate son. On the other hand, in Siddhartha, we have Vasudeva. He teaches Siddhartha about how to overcome the sufferings of bondage. How are we to go through the sufferings because of our own family bondage or life bondage? The river in the third bank of the river is mysterious, eternal. It has something to do with death. Whereas the river that we have in Siddhartha is a river of life and a river of uh, wisdom. Actually, Vasudeva tells Siddhartha to listen to the river so that he can learn more about wisdom. The Brazilian story is written in the form of magic realism, whereas the German novel is metaphysical but also realistic. Gomara Rosa's story is disruptive and dissonant. It does not leave us in peace, whereas the German novel Siddhartha is restful and resonant. When we read the novel, we feel happy, we have a pleasant feeling that we understand something about life. We have a big question, what is that third bank? We have a river, one side we have a bank, another side we have a bank, but in between the third bank of the river, where is that third bank? It has to be naturally in between and is the boat a bank? What does that boat stand for? Something that carries us through our life? What carries us through our life? Is it our memory or is it time? So, we can connect that boat with the boat in the novel Siddhartha as well and maybe they have something to do with memory and also time, the feelings that we have, we live through them. What are the takeaways from the third bank of the river? Never indulge in quarrels and accusations like the mother that we have. These constant pickerings might have forced the father to leave the family help people even when unasked. The father does not ask the son to give him food, but he does it. Forget about the unanswered and unanswerable questions. If we are pursuing some questions which do not have answers, we will not be able to live peacefully. Understand that life is more about falsehood than truth. That is the beauty of life. Take life as it comes. Do whatever you can. Do not worry about what you cannot do. When you cannot do anything, remain silent. I am what must be silent. Swim in the river of life or in another way, swim against the current of life. Somehow live your life. Let us see the summary now. We looked into the objectives of discussing the third bank of the river written by Gumara Rosa. We saw his life and writings. We saw the characters. We read some passages from this strange story, the third bank of the river and we discussed the theme, form, language and literary devices in the story. We also tried to understand certain human relationships within the family and outside the family. We reflected on life with a series of questions. Then we moved on to understand Gomera Rosa's views on the crocodile and the river. We compared Herman Hesse's Siddhartha with Rosa's uh, short story, The Third Bank of the River, understood something about the pursuit of wisdom. Siddhartha is all about self-realization. Maybe there is something to do with self-realization in the case of the father in The Third Bank of the River. Nobody knows. The takeaways from this story are do whatever you can, pursue life as much as you can. Help yourself understand what this life is all about. The third bank is a symbol of what we are pursuing, where we live our life. Swim along with the river of life or swim against the current of life. Learn about yourself and the world. You can of course check these references. They are easily available and learn more about Brazilian literature, especially Gumara Rosa's short story, The Third Bank of the River. You can also read Herman Hesse's novel Siddhartha to know more about the aim of life. Why are we born? How do we live our life? 
what is that we achieve what is that we can do with this life listen to the river you can learn a lot that's a lesson we have from siddhartha probably that is a kind of indirect lesson we have from the third bank of the river live your life listen to your life thank you